We've got Kawhi's NV10S and we're putting it up against Yamaha's N1X. Very top of the tier of both the Yamaha and the Kawhi digital piano world, these are both the first point in which grand piano actions are offered in their respective digital piano lineups. We get asked about doing this video a lot, so we're finally getting around to it. Thanks so much for joining us. Let's get started on this right away. Both of these instruments use their respective companies' flagship tone engines. I think the philosophy with both of these tone engines is that they are taking the source, being their top nine-foot concert grands, they're layering on several different uh, digital enhancements in the form of resonance engines to simulate some of those real-time behaviors that otherwise just can't be captured through individual sampling notes. And they're trying to deliver the very best uh, nine foot concert grand tonal simulation that they possibly can. And the whole purpose of both of these instruments quite clearly is to deliver as close to a grand piano experience in digital form uh, with a much smaller physical footprint than a grand piano would normally occupy. Now undoubtedly some of you at home are going to be asking why these two instruments are in a comparison video anyway because the Kawhi is quite a bit more expensive than the Yamaha. So like is this really a fair comparison? A couple of interesting points uh, in response to that likely question. So for one, these two are the most compared uh, Novus and Avant Grand series models when it comes to search volume on Google. We used several tools to try and validate this and it didn't matter what pairing we did, NV10 versus N3X, NV5 versus an N1X, it didn't matter, nothing came even close to the search volume that we found when we were researching NV10S versus N1X. I think the action is probably the biggest draw for either one of these instruments. And since this is the lowest price point where you can access a grand piano action on the Yamaha side, and this is the lowest price point you can access a grand piano action on the Kawhi side, it's likely that people are kind of stuck in a bit of a dilemma between these two because they know that they want a grand piano action and then they're kind of left trying to figure out if everything else that the Kawhi brings is worth the extra money or do you just stay bare bones and get the grand piano action with the Yamaha. On the Kawhi, you have the SKEX rendering engine. They've taken their nine foot concert grand and they have made a, a, a stereo, individual stereo recordings um, from several different uh, points of space around that piano. It's kind of like the light version of what the Vienna Symphonic Library's synchron piano approach is. And then they give you several different modes uh, within that rendering engine uh, that they have named. So they don't allow you to get in there and necessarily tinker with mic levels and mic placements. These are presets that they have done to deliver you know, particular results. Um, and it's basically different mix downs of all of those sources into the stereo uh, signal that winds up either in your ear through a set of headphones or through the multi-channel output uh, through the rest of the piano. So let's listen a little bit to the NV10S.
So here are some things that I observe on the NV10S when I'm playing it. A really fantastic sound stage. And what I mean by that, or is, I guess what most people mean when they use that terminology, is that you're able, or your brain is able to actually easily recreate a sense of three-dimensional space. Now, I don't have any headphone enhancement tech turned on at the moment. You actually do have the option to do that in both cases. They've got a different kind of spatialization technology you can apply to headphone, but this is pretty well just raw. And just the sense of detail that you have is really extraordinary. And there's definitely a sense of space. Even with the ambience completely shut off, um, you feel like there's you know, a foot or two between you and where that hammer noise is coming from. When we get up into the top range of the instrument, I've often described the Shigeru as having a really thick treble. That's done to say cloudy or muddy. It's just, there's just so much um, substance right around the attack and closer to the fundamental than up into the uh, higher partials. which is a behavior I actually more associate or equally associate uh, with great nine foot Steinways. We're gonna switch now to the Yamaha. So here's what I'm hearing on the Yamaha. Just like the Kawhi, it's a slightly different character in the bass, but still a really nice, clear bass tone, which is great. So we get up into the mid-range. So it's a very tight sound, you know, even if you turn up the uh, ambience, and right now the ambience is actually on about half. There's a difference between that sort of digital reverb that gives you uh, sort of that far off sort of tail. And a 
a, a sense of genuine space between you and the sound source. It's a slightly different thing. And the reverb on this right now uh, is uh, a medium room and it's about 30%, so a lower setting than there. And there's just a, you know a greater sense of uh, space, not reverb specifically, just space. The treble on here is a little cleaner than what you get on the Kawhi. A little um, cleaner, but also a little thinner. To round off the conversation on acoustic tone, I mean, both, you know, if somebody offered me one or the other to go hang out on a desert island and do that, I would be perfectly happy with either. So anybody who has the luxury of choosing between these two, it, it's, you know, a spoil of riches. But if you do have the option of choosing, I do think that there are some, you know, some interesting and and meaningful differences that you can you can focus on. It feels a little more like you're actually in a room, um, you know, sitting you know two three feet behind where the hammers are striking, and it's a bit more of a player's experience, I guess I would say, versus playing this, where it's like you're hearing a perfect recording of yourself back, but it isn't necessarily quite the same as having been in front of the instrument playing it yourself. So those are my impressions of those two in terms of the piano tone. Now action is going to be a really big thing. Uh, when you are comparing these two instruments, or really any two instruments like it. There's a very large difference between the feel between these two. On the Kawai, uh, there is a sense you're playing a much bigger piano. This is not automatically a good thing. But when you are behind a Novus 10, you have the very distinct sense that you are playing a seven or a nine foot piano. And there's a couple of reasons for this. One. The pivot length and the overall key stick length of the Novus 10 is longer than the pivot length and key stick length of what they are putting in the N1X. That right away gives just a slightly different sense of motion and inertia um, and action uh, to the key. It also uh, creates a better and more consistent repetition speed. The second thing is the damper simulator on the back of that key, whereas the N1X is not equipped with a damper simulation. Now moving beyond the action, now we really start to get some major gaps in functionality and variety between these two instruments. And this is uh, pretty clearly where Kawhi is hoping that people are going to be able to justify the price difference here. Here on the Kawhi, we basically have a touchscreen Android powered uh, control surface which gives us full access to every uh, aspect of the playing experience. Uh, we can pick through all of our uh, acoustic piano tones, uh, get into our editor right there, uh, or get into the other sounds. Uh, you also have the option of accessing um, a lot of uh, pre-recorded music as well as uh, the lesson books USB uh, music player. Uh, here on the Yamaha, it's a push button control uh, with a pretty basic uh, LCD display. Uh, you do have the ability to do some USB recording. You can combine a couple of sounds together. You've got the metronome functionality uh, and you do have uh, Bluetooth, but it's about a tenth of what you've got available uh, on the Kawai in terms of uh, functionality and options once, again, once you get out of that acoustic piano realm. In addition, the connectivity differences between these two instruments are pretty significant. On the Kawai, you've got an auxiliary line in with uh, volume control, independent uh, balance control on that. Uh, you have left and right auxiliary outs uh, that are totally separate and independent from the headphone. You've got 3.5 and quarter inch headphone out. Um, so basically two full patch bays on the bottom with the NV-10S uh, to manage what's going in and out of the instrument. 
Uh, on the Avant Grand, there's no option to actually have independent speaker on and off, and you've just got basically your two uh, headphone jacks, both of which are quarter inch. The last big factor we're gonna talk about are the speakers. Uh, now Yamaha has six by 30 watt rated uh, speakers on this instrument. Now there are three top facing, and then there are uh, two bottom facing and one actually rear facing. Uh, it's a little bit hard to identify, but if you're looking at the back of the instrument, there actually is um, a spot in which you've got some sort of mids and highs uh, coming out to throw up against the wall and get a little more room ambience happening. The speakers are really well balanced. They've managed the stereo image uh, extremely well. Um, the only thing that was a little surprising to me with the Yamaha is at similar volume settings, uh, even though this is hypothetically uh, rated at 180 watts worth of sound, uh, I was not able to get it to overpower the Kawai. In fact, it was quite the opposite. Even though Kawai is only rated it at 130 watts, uh, the Kawai was capable of a significantly uh, greater level of tone and just filling up the room quite a bit more. Particularly, I also felt like that was the case uh, in terms of the bass sound. Uh, now, the position of their woofer is different on the Kawai than it is on the Yamaha. With the Yamaha, it's a downward facing woofer. On the Kawai, they've actually put the woofer right in the lyre uh, facing towards the player. So that may have something to do with uh, just the sense of uh, fullness and power uh, coming at the player. So if anything, the Kawai's got more power, but I did find that I needed to manage uh, some of the high end coming off those four tweeters on the Kawai more than with the Yamaha. The Yamaha, although it felt a little underpowered at times, uh, always felt really nicely balanced without the need to go in and do any tweaking with the Kawai. I do generally, once I find a sound I really like in headphones, have to do just a little bit of tweaking in terms of uh, touching with the voicing uh, or touching with the overall EQ of the instrument uh, just to get those uh, top end speakers not biting too much. If you're using it at a volume of around 65 or 70% or lower, I actually don't find that to be the case at all. Uh, it's just when we were uh, really running these both up into like the 100% range to just see what the total output was, that's when I noticed uh, that there was definitely some harshness coming off the Kawai. So to summarize, the N1X plays and feels and sounds like a smaller piano. Uh, it feels like a five foot, five foot, five uh, grand piano uh, in virtually every aspect that it's, that it's giving me. It's real, it feels extremely well done, the execution is great, uh, I really like the balance. When you get into the NV10S, uh, and I would, I would nail this 10 out of 10 times in a blind test. It's like, it's not even close. This feels, plays, sounds like a much bigger grand piano. And so for people who are used to a larger grand piano, this is gonna be a hands down uh, clear favorite for you. Uh, the sense of motion on the keys is, is, a, is a bigger piano. The way they've mic'd the instrument, the more the, the sound delivers to you, there's more of a sense of space, like there's, there's a greater length to the instrument and your ear is slightly further away uh, from the origin of the tone. In addition to that, if any of the functional and feature differences between the two um, are a big deal, then that's also something where the difference between these two instruments is really clear cut. Do you want like 100 sounds or 10? Do you want, you know, 100 songs or 10? Do you want tons of control and functionality directly on the machine? Or do you essentially want a, a, a control surface that's pretty similar to what you might find on like a pretty basic uh, console instrument? And finally, maybe there's just a difference in the tone between the two that you prefer. Because of all of the things we've talked about, tone is the one thing where I can't really say to somebody, well, you're absolutely gonna like one or absolutely like the other. Uh, it's such a personal thing. So thanks everybody, hope you found this helpful. To finish things off, we're gonna finish with a speaker demo uh, playing exactly the same Chopin waltz between the two of them. We're gonna start with the Yamaha, finish with the Kawai, and we're gonna be using uh, Rode NT5s, completely dry, straight to you, no processing. Mm -hmm. 